welcome. Today's topic we have already shared and uh, it is going to be on the chat GPT. We'll just go with the very basics. Um, we already know what chat GPT is. Uh, still, I'll just give you an overview of what it really is, though the conversation and all everything is there. Uh, and we know there's a storm going on. So chat GPT is a language model developed by OpenAI. And this language model is being uh, getting trained upon massive amount of information. Initially, they have built it with the amount 40% of all the internet traffic to make it a proper language model till 2021, which means ChatGPT is basically cannot answer any real time questions. However, that 40% of the all internet traffic, which was trained upon, it had a huge amount of data. Now with 100 million users these days using ChatGPT and providing different sets of answers, and also providing instruction that whether the answer is correct or not, they are getting trained on all those information. So this chat GPT basically is kind of human language type. It can read natural languages. It can take inputs in a human form, how they can uh, speak to each other. And at the same time, it can give some answers based on the knowledge it has. So what is the actual power of ChatGPT? Why well, it's uh, the talk of the year. And uh, since it got launched in you know, late of November, uh, in the mid of November uh, last year, within a couple of months, it got so much popularity. The first point over here, you can see that it's conversational AI. Now, when we talked about like it can just chat with you just like a human being, ChatGPT is used to build chatbots, virtual assistants, and other conversational interfaces that can handle customer support, provide information, or perform tasks. So just like a human companion, basically, it can take inputs in a natural language, I mean human language, and it can talk to us in that way. We do not have to think about what kind of question we should ask or how to format it so that it can understand. It can talk to us in a better way. Content generation is another aspect of it. We discussed about it in, um, uh, in one of the other uh, PDCs, I remember. However, chat GPTs can generate very precise and uh, with proofread articles, summaries, and other text-based content. Now, here, the chat GPT and how the contents are getting generated, these are all based on the information it has in his mind. So sometimes we can keep um, the chat GPT to write us uh, a specific story, a sad story, a horror story, sometimes cracking a joke. All these can be handled by chat GPT. Oh, language translation is again another thing where it can translate something to something else since it's a text based again. Question answering, we covered it in the conversational AI. If we have a specific question, just like in search engines, we put a question, it provides us an answer. Now, there's a limitation though, we'll talk about it later on. Just to give an answer on uh, this area, chat GPT is not 100% accurate because it it actually is trained upon the, uh, we call in AI, it's supervised kind of, that these are the questions that, and these are the possible answers. So the model core of ChatGPT is a supervised. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, okay. Uh, I hope this, this is part of a cartoon though. Um, she had a name, uh, unfortunately I forgot her name again. Uh, uh, there was a animated cartoon. Where... Eva. Eva. Eva, exactly, exactly. So uh, she's quite intelligent. And uh, there was another guy who was kind, he was not looking at advanced as such. So there is a huge story behind the scene. However, if you look at that, it's showing us how, uh, that, how to write a code. I mean, yeah, funny though. <laughs> The chat GPT is actually doing the same. 
for a couple of uh, programming languages, it can generate code snippets to some particular uh, requirements. Now, if you go to the slide and what we learned from Eva, uh, we took some homework. Okay, I I know like when we talk about a homework, it's basically we are taking something at home to study. Uh, however, it's for us to know like what things we can take from Eva's lesson. All right, so um, we can build chatbots. So uh, chatbots we have already discussed. There are AIs out there which can support um, a couple of questions like Q and A's and it can generate answers. Since ChatGPT has a huge data set been trained upon to answer in different cases and scenarios, chatbots are idle for chatbot. I mean, ChatGPT. Virtual assistants, again, is a huge demand when it comes to any particular platform where a human uh, support member is needed to answer some question or they have to assist with the task sometime with uh, random questions related to that platform. Chat GPT can perform all this because it has the power to you know, perform those or um, compile those questions in natural language way. The other side of it that the questionnaire, whoever is asking, they will not be able to understand whether it's a real human being or not. So funny part, virtual assistance can also be done through chat GPT. Question answering we have already covered. Content generation, of course, there are lots of websites where we have to con generate content. These days, even articles are getting uh, written through this uh, chat GPT. Um, there was a bad news for the copy paste guys like me is that even though it's generating contents, people are building um, anti chat GPT models to, you know, find and figure it out whether it has been generated through chat GPT or not. Bad news for college students, university students, though, uh, it can we may not do that forever, but yes, uh, things are getting built so fast. Language translation, we have already discussed. It's like uh, it can translate in multiple languages. Um, if you input something into it and ask it to translate, it will give it uh, an answer. For programmers, for sure, the main question that we get, uh, like what type of language is it support? And uh, it can handle snippets and all. We see uh, Python, Java, C++, okay? And JavaScript, Ruby, Sharp, Swift, Go, PHP, TypeScript, more are getting added. Now, the reason this, uh, even like a month back, it was only four to five max. PHP was there, even uh, Python was uh, one of the first, Ruby was there, C Sharp was there, C++ was there. So the reason it is getting quite fast in learning, it's only because there is a way to train these chat GPTs with our own inputs. Since consider it 100 million users, out of them, 50,000 are developers just like us. They're putting in information and they're training those models based on those different types of um, programming languages. So you can expect that by next one or two months, there will be at least 20 programming language or similar it will support. All right, so how about the other areas? How quality assurance team can take help? We can generate test cases. We can review the cases, bug detection, a particular piece of code we can put, or sometimes uh, a case, an area of a test case, test result analysis, and defect documentation. So here on the other side, we have designers. So design assistants, sometimes we have to uh, understand the concept of the clients and also generate the color palettes, which can go, um, uh, by the actual requirement, icon generation, or content generation. So these are a couple of examples, like how we can use it in different uh, departments or whatever we do in our day-to-day -day life. What is next? It's particularly for a slow time when we have uh, the recessions in place and uh, there are many um, there are many businesses which is slowing down and we also have the time to explore it and how we can utilize this platform, ChatGPT. 
we need to know the power of ChatGPT and play around first. And before we dive into the areas of applications of a ChatGPT or AI model, we need to know what it can do and what it can't. So the limitations of ChatGPT needs to be there and also the power. There are lots of ChatGPT groups getting opened every single day. And uh, in SAI, we also have a separate group where you can join and see there are different people sharing their ideas, new findings in ChatGPT, and of course, on the application level. We should join that to see what things people are doing through ChatGPT. Identifying existing client business area where ChatGPT can help to boost it. All right, so we might have a lot of clients in uh, different platforms. And at the end of uh, the day, whatever platform we are using in technology side, it's all based on a business idea. There could be a business area where ChatGPT can dive in and it can simplify the actual work, which was manual or let's say uh, where it requires additional input from the users. We have discussed a couple of examples in one of the previous slides where it can be used still, it can uh, be more of that uh, or without uh, any limit on those areas. We need to think about it and identify if there is a business area where we can do. Prepare small pitch ideas and during client meeting, dive in those ideas and try to sell now. Here, there are a couple of um, uh, examples though, uh, where we can dive in. Since we all are connected to some or other client, we can prepare a small pitch. It doesn't have to be too big. We can sell a small module, let's say chatbot. And that chatbot idea, we can present to the client and see the feasibility for them. Because at the end, if it's simply, it is simplifying something which is beneficial for the clients, they'll definitely take it and taste the uh, technology. So there we can prepare small pitches in different, whether it's a designing team, um, our quality assurance team, we have developers, we have managers, we have PMs, whoever is in that involved into different projects, we can create those small pitch ideas for us, identifying those areas and present to the client. Generating Okay, generate easy, fast, and targeted contents via ChatGPT and publish as much as possible. So this is again, uh, since the slow time is happening, we can generate articles and um, specific uh, use cases based on our inputs, right? And we can also provide an input this way that we, I have a software, I have a feature which has this inputs and this does this. Now generate a use case or test case or something like that it will generate based on the inputs we provided it. It can do that. That way we can generate tons of contents to be published um, in, through the marketing team. One question though, uh, here we can ask that, okay, everyone is having access to chat GPT and isn't it that something may get copy pasted or copyright? The reason I said like the case, use case, we'll have to provide it input, like based on this scenarios, generate something. That way it will be different from others. And every time ChatGPT is changing its answers, it's not the same answer you'll get forever. Participate in projects and get hands-on experience with artificial intelligence. Now this is high time. I, I don't think we'll have to uh, focus more. I mean, this is the best time to get used to those smaller concepts. All the other days, we used to build our own models, some of them which were available publicly, uh, there's like TensorFlow or other platforms where you can utilize those pre-built models and uh, build something on your own in projects. This chat GPTs and other models have made the natural language processing more easier than ever. It has provided all the resources needed uh, and the actual documentation, we can go ahead, build smaller tools. It can be of anyone, whether we are working in the front end, back end, anyone can try it out and see the power of it. 
So it is high time to participate on those projects. Some of them are running in our company. We can definitely get some experience, at least how it works and uh, what things can be done through it. I think uh, that was quite uh, it 